What they say is a fight for justice on the steps of South Africa's constitutional court. Members of the Galela movement have spent the last five months camping here on the court steps. They say many victims of apartheid-era crimes are being ignored, even though the government has a fund worth 100 million US dollars for reparations. Nomarashia Bonase is the group's leader and says many of the members missed out on the truth and reconciliation process. I feel down and I feel the government is not doing any justice, not only to me, to each and every victim in South Africa by not allowing, the, by not even creating that platform. Because I feel like it's a part one, it's a healing, it's a healing uh, uh, session to speak out, to be listened at, and at the same time to be redressed. Bonasse says she was beaten by apartheid police while working as an activist. But perhaps the most painful scar is the loss of her brother. She says he was murdered by the army in 1993 during a vigil for liberation activist Chris Hani. It took about a week not knowing where his whereabouts, his body, until I had to go to the government moshar in Jimistin, where I found a pack of uh, cops dead bodies who were packed like, uh, like bags of cement on top of, in order to get to know his body. I have to ask also the person who was working there, can you help me? Because I feel like my brother is maybe among those. Bonase says his death was never investigated. Sister organization, the Kulumani Support Group, has 130,000 statements from people who missed out during the TRC process. Statements it says the government should consider. It says many victims were not comfortable to speak out so soon after apartheid, while others didn't have the means. The state never announced where the, where the TRC statement takers would be. I mean, it was pure luck if you even heard of it. And then also because people had were basically really destitute already at that time, they didn't have money to take taxis to go to the statement takers. Um, those were some of the very practical problems. We have documented this all for the Department of Justice because we think it's completely unjustified to just close the doors when all this work has been documented. And, and the flaws are actually on the side of the state, you know. Despite the research and despite the protest, the government says it's too late to reopen cases. When it comes to the people that are currently living outside the constitutional court, are you saying that they should simply go home? Yes, they should go home. Uh, and we raise it with them when we're there, that uh, there's no need for them to, to be there out in the court uh, on this thing, because um, Ourselves, there is nothing that we can do. The parliament has, has the list, is closed. The regulations are done through the processes of parliament. And it will be a regularity for us to, to open the list. The South African government says it will use the reparation fund for housing, education and health care for the 21,000 people on the current list. Members of the Galela Victims Group say the only thing stopping the government from putting more people on that list is a lack of political will. After decades of writing letters and lobbying, they hope their physical presence at the heart of the justice system might shame the government into action.